and I'm really glad to see participants joining in. Um, I'm very happy that people want to know about this topic, this area of child in need of care and protection. So uh, yeah, let's just begin the presentation. I am, I'll be sharing a presentation with all of you. And um, let me tell you that this uh, presentation that I've prepared will have a lot of animated pictures on it. And I've done that with a purpose. And uh, that purpose is that I believe that, uh, I don't know if law students or lawyers or legal fraternity is very much happy having such kind of presentations, but I think any such kind of visuals definitely adds in grasping a lot of information. And that's the reason I have put into it. But the major reason why I have done it because I feel the topic that we'll be having a discussion on, which is the Juvenile Justice Act, uh, primarily focusing on the children in need of care and protection, that law is very child friendly. And the law shouts out two mantras aloud. And one is the best interest of the child. And the second is the child friendly processes. The Juvenile Justice Act focuses a lot on having a child friendly, child centric process. And that's what uh, my intention has been in making this presentation. And uh, I guess in every slide, it will remind you that this is a child friendly presentation because it's a child friendly law. So that's the reason I've made the presentation like this. So Juvenile Justice Act, and uh, let me tell this to the viewers, I hope the viewers are aware, the participants are aware that this law is divided in two parts. One is uh, with the child in need of care and protection. In short, we call them CNCP. And the other one is the child in conflict with law. For, in short, we call them CCL. Now, before proceeding on this topic, I would uh, first like to understand uh, or like to call upon a little bit of interaction with the participants and we can can we just start with a question like what do you understand by the term child what is the definition of child as for you can anybody just share a child is someone who is below the age of 18 yes anybody else would like to contribute i think a child is a person with their own thoughts views feelings um which are most sometimes exploited, sometimes not hurt. And it's very important to understand that even if they may look small, they're still a person. Okay, that was a very comprehensive understanding of a child considering the legal uh, provisions that we have. But I think uh, let's just keep it simple and uh, what the law says. It's a, a person, anybody who is below the age of 18 child that's the definition of a child simple but let me also tell you that uh, this is the definition of a child under the juvenile justice act okay so a child's definition differs from different legal provisions in child labor act the child adolescent act of 2016 i am uh, forgetting the entire a title but uh, the this child labor will define child as any person who is below the age of 14 years the children below from the age of 14 to 18 are considered as adolescents and the child labor act in child marriage act i am sure you all know that the age for women uh, for the girls is 18 years any girl who is below the age of 18 is considered to be a child. Any boy who is below the age of 21 years is considered to be a child. Now, there's a debate, there's an amendment, there's an amendment passed in the Lo Lok Sabha and there's a debate going on to raise the age for girls also to and make it 21, make it equal as the boys. But this is what is the overview. That's a whole together different debate. It will take another session altogether. But what I want to stress here is the definition of child differs from different laws because every law has its own implications every law has its own importance and to deal with such kind of such age group of children and that's why these uh, definitions are given uh, both the definitions given by both the participants are absolutely correct and uh, there's no right or wrongs 
uh, law can be interpreted in various sense but when we uh, have to uh, submit in uh, before the court and when we are talking in terms of law we only talk what is there written on the law so that's that's the simple definition of law, uh, child and that is as per jj act because we are focusing on jj act today it will be a child or a person who is below the age of 18 irrespective of any gender okay again a little bit of interaction i would like to invite you and i would want to understand uh, if anybody uh, can say what is their understanding of a child in need of care and protection and uh, also if you can say what is your understanding of child in conflict with law a child in need uh, of care and protection would be someone that uh, needs attention of a guardian who is like able to uh, provide for the child better because they are incapable of uh, taking care of themselves at uh, such a young age and also uh, that includes mentally as well because a person who is like nurtured properly would grow to grow up to be a good person i can consider that yes and anybody else one more participant well a child who may literally have conflict with they may have done something illegal out of their pure need or necessity um, or just again because of the circumstances that they have faced and because of that that is a decision that they're taking but sadly it is illegal and hence it is in conflict with them. well well correct Thank you, Rahi and Jia, for contributing. And uh, yes, let me again simplify whatever you have shared. Child in conflict with law is a very simple definition in the law. It is absolutely correctly told by Rahi that anything that a child does which is illegal, the child becomes a child in conflict with law. Now, any person below the age of 18 does a crime mentioned in the IPC then there's a that this child is considered to be child in conflict with law my presentation is not about child in conflict with law but this one slide i have just dedicated to child in conflict with law so that we have a fair understanding of the teacher act so this is just uh, to give you an understanding that a child in conflict with law is always produced before a juvenile justice board and uh, it's never gone he, the child is never put to jail the child is always in the observation home. When I say child, the child till the time he completes the age of 18 years old. So this is more or less overall provisions of uh, the CCL, the JJB, uh, you know, including this child in conflict with law provisions and what is the JJ Act is trying to say. Please uh, also understand that the provisions through which a child is being tried in the court is much different from that how a child is being how an adult has been tried in the court so in in fact the court here is not called a court it is called board still in practice in general practice we do say children's court there's not children's court is a different term from juvenile justice board and there's a different committee called child welfare committee so this is just an overview of child in conflict with law it's very simple to understand a child who has committed crime who is, becomes the child in conflict with law he's produced before the jjb and he is never going to jail he's always going to the observation home there are a lot of other provisions involved in it it, it definitely requires different sessions to cover the different intricacies of this uh, law and that's why i'm not covering this i am not an expert in this law i will uh, that's why i don't want to touch upon this but uh, only one thing is that there is an amendment the, there's an uh, the act which we were referring was juvenile justice care and protection act 2015 and now there's an amendment juvenile justice care and protection amendment act 2021 now there is also a rules there are also rules attached to it so there is juvenile justice model rules of 2022 which came into force yesterday that is first of september 2022 and that's why this amendments uh, to come in picture and to come in practice is going to take some time but that's the uh, legal update for all of you that the, there is an amendment now this amendment is largely focusing on the crimes it's it, the major difference that this amendment of 2021 has brought is uh, that of dividing or categorizing the different crimes i'll just simply give you a brief that 
the crimes which have punishment from three years to seven years. Okay, more than seven years would be heinous crimes. Three to seven years would be serious crimes, and less than three years would be petty crimes. So that's how the division is done. The way of dealing with these crimes is different for uh, all the three categories, and that's the major amendment that this 2021 has been brought, and that is majorly dealing with the CCL. For CCN CP, uh, there are different provisions which has been introduced, and that is a little technical in nature. It is for the implementation of the law, but not in in the process as such. So it's not having that major impact. But uh, yes, there will be a major impact while you are actually on the ground. I will touch upon it in the later session. So first, starts with the basic. What is Juvenile Justice Care and Protection Act 2015? For, we have understood that this law is for these two categories of children. We have understood what is the definition of the children. Now let's understand what is CWC. CWC is, of course, under this act. It has been constituted under Section 27 of this act. And to make it simple, it is the bench of magistrates. It is a committee. Though if we say it is a committee, it is a bench of magistrate. It's been given the power of a judicial uh, nature. So the orders that are passed by this committee are uh, binding on the parties uh, uh, against whom and for whom these orders are being given. So before proceeding with the session, because I kept on saying this is a child-friendly presentation, let me start with a story to you. The story is of a family. Uh, which has two children and the parents staying. So they're this family of four members and uh, the parents of these children are uh, working uh, family members. They have to go out of the home, spend a lot of time outside and that's where they cannot take care of their children, of their family and that's why they are looking for a housemate. They're looking for a domestic help. Now for this, they get in touch with a placement agency they contact the placement agency and tell them that we need a domestic help. The agent of this placement agency in the ne very next day brings a girl in front of them and says that this girl is ready to help you as a domestic help. The girl looks only like 16, 17 years old to the family and the family says or the family shows their apprehension that uh, the girl is very uh, young and how would she be able to take care of the family and the children and the home. So the agent then takes off the Aadhaar card of this girl, gives it to the family, which says that the girl has completed 18 years of age and she can very well work as a domestic help in your family. Then they are uh, a little satisfied with it. And then they say, OK, we decide the salary of this girl would be like 5000 a month. And uh, three months salary, that is 15,000, they give it to the agent because agent has told them that this salary, he will give it to the family of this girl and the girl will be working here. Now, after two months of the girl working, she doesn't wish to work anymore and she is missing her family a lot and uh, she just wants to go back to her family. Now, this girl wants to go and talk to the family member. She goes and says that I don't want to work with you. I want to go back to my family. I am missing them. So the family member or, or the employer now, he says that not going anywhere. You are going to stay here. We have paid for you and you're here for like a year or something. The girl, without her wish, without her consent, continues because she has no other option and forcefully she is uh, working there and she pulls on her days. She pulls on till one year and uh, after a year, she cannot tolerate it anymore. Now she is having this desperate need of going out. She just wants to meet her family and she cannot be here anymore. So what this girl does now is she escapes from the home. She takes some money from the home and she just escapes from the home, finding the right opportunity. When the employer finds that the girl is not there at the home, he goes and file a complaint in the police station. On the other side, this girl is actually at a railway station with some money and just crying on the railway station because she doesn't know where to go, how to go. Now, here she comes in contact with a, a railway police. A railway police finds her out, sees her, sees her situation. And then he takes this girl to the nearest child welfare community. So the child welfare sees her, the child welfare 
tries to talk to her and seeing her situation they declare her to be child in need of care and protection and uh, after declaring child in need of care and protection they first place her in a shelter home in a children's home and uh, they keep her in the in the safe uh, shelter home and they pass an order for verifications of her home they try to trace her home they fi- try to find uh, they try to give an order of social investigation then they do counseling with the child and uh, after calling up the reports of counseling after calling up uh, the ch- social investigation report it has been found that the girl was employed to this particular place and she was being forced to be in that place she was not allowed to cut contact with her family also there was an ossification test done to understand the age of the child because the pri- the first appearance of the girl was that of a minor from the ossification test it was found that the girl is 16 years old now and uh, then they understand that the girl was employed when she was just 15 years old and after finding having these all findings the family is also called the employers are called to the cwc uh, the agent is not traceable in the situation and uh, the employer is told that you have been you have employed this child you have not even paid a single amount the family has not received any amount the girl has not received any amount and uh, that you have forced a minor to work at your place the f- employer is made to give her salary of this one year as per the wages act because she has worked and she has been given that salary also she has been given compensation by the employer for the loss uh, of her childhood and other uh, losses that she has faced and it doesn't end with the compensation here the child welfare committee directs the police station to file an fir under the child labor law under the juvenile justice act section 75 and 79 and also under the indian penal code the section 370 where the ch- uh, child is forced to work as a labor okay story ends and uh, story doesn't ends for the employer story actually begins for the employer because then the courts uh, proceedings and everything starts okay so why did i tell you this story first uh, it gives a brief idea about how a child welfare committee works that was my first idea of giving you a overview of this entire set, entire law basically when a child is produced before a child welfare committee the child is produced here unlike any other court it's not where you decide what is the right or wrong it's not here to decide which act uh, or or to prove any crime it's it's the committee it doesn't work that way the committee is only here to understand that what has happened with the child what the child is saying is right or wrong and what rehabilitative measures can be taken for the child in our case where the child came first counseling was given because the child was disturbed second family were traced the child was handed over to the family and because the loss that the child has faced because of uh, working and employment that loss was compensated and this kind of rehabilitative measures as what the child welfare committee takes now i'll uh, go through or run through the slides and i think that will be the stories background can be kept in your mind to understand uh, the various provisions of the law So this is what we have understood about the child in need of care and protection and the child in conflict with law. The definition of child in need of care and protection is what I have not told you because the child in need of care and protection's definition is very wide, and it's been given like one, two, three, four, five, six under the law. So these are the provisions which categorizes a child to be a child in need of care and protection, and this is given under Section Two, Clause Fourteen of the Juvenile Justice Act. Now, this is what categorizes a person or child to be child in need of care and protection. While CCL's definition, like I have already mentioned, is very simple: any child who has committed a crime, as per the IPC, that child will be commit. That child will be. child in conflict with law so let's understand what are child in conflict with law or cncp so any child who is found without any home 
uh, on the streets also we find without any home which uh, generally means without any parental support nobody to take care like the participant has rightly mentioned that they has nobody to take care the no guardian to take care that child will be termed as child in need of care and protection and such child can be brought before the child welfare committee then there are victims of child labor in our case this child because she was employed as a domestic help she becomes the victims of child labor many of you may have a question that from 14 to 18 children can be employed and stuff like that so let me clarify that from 14 to 18 children can be employed only in non hazardous activities if the child is uh, is employed in hazardous activity that, that is also punishable under the law and what are the hazardous activities we have a schedule for it where all the hazardous activities are mentioned and domestic help comes under one of the hazardous activities and therefore in our case if a person who is below the age of 18 16 17 you apply as a house help that is going to be termed as child labor and any victim under child uh, of the child labor will be produced before the child welfare committee for proceedings again for process of her rehabilitation let me focus on this point again and again that the child welfare committee will take or will give decisions on the rehabilitations of the child the child welfare committee doesn't decide who is the accused will not decide that will not have a trial in front of them to decide yes this is the culprit or not and the punishment should be given or not the child welfare committee does not even punish the child the child welfare committee should not even think of punishment in whatsoever sense because punishment is not in the dictionary of child welfare committee it is for the rehabilitation of the child punishment is the matter of the respective courts for child labor a magistrate or the uh, designated courts for poxo we have designated courts and things like that so that court will decide by the child labor brought before the child welfare committee is only and only for their rehabilitative orders any child who is abused or child who is neglected even the parents you can make a complaint against them uh, if it's a shelter home you can make a complaint against them the teachers you know anybody who abuses the child physically or neglects there's a lot of uh, definition on the neglect also of the child where you are not taking care of the hygiene of the nutrition of things like that and the child is suffering that becomes a neglect it becomes an abuse and the child becomes a child in need of care and protection they can be produced before the child welfare committee children who are missing now these cases comes a lot in front of the child welfare committee children who have simply left their homes because they want to see mumbai for for mumbai uh, cases such cases definitely comes in major cities like this in delhi also you uh, see such that they want to see delhi they want to see mumbai you know uh, such cases will come where they will they they have come out without their parents and uh, then the child and services take uh, catch hold of them and then they are produced before the child welfare committee also there are cases where the children have come with the family they have missed their train for some reason and they landed up in the railway stations they are taken by the child line services and they are brought before the child welfare committee so missing children are one of the children who are without parental support found and that's why they fall into the category of child in need of care and protection and they are produced before the child welfare committee now process with the ch- missing children is different and uh, they are always given temporary shelter till the time they could find out the parents of these children the parents are called here and then the children are handed over to their family so they are always placed in the temporary shelter home setups traffic children many of such cases may come um, it's a very hard thing to identify victims of trafficking because they come here with uh, various under various pretexts this is most uh this is under a lot of disguise their work and it's very hard to really determine and it's always on suspicions and suspects that such uh, victims are identified many times child uh, line services they are on their rounds and they keep low finding such children if they if they see something like this they will definitely bring this children to the child welfare committee one of our cases there were three girls brought by a man and uh, 
all of them were produced before the child welfare committee and when the child welfare committee asked what are you here for they said that we are here to work they said that they'll give us work and who will give you work so this is our maternal uncle and maternal uncle is also not a blood related uncle he is an uncle that we know who is in our area he said he'll give us work and we are we have come here and this uh, kind of a statement is more being given by usually traffickers and because the cwc here was active enough to identify that so they have taken a hold of this case and then they gave temporary shelter to these girls they could find out the family they handed over the family to them and uh, i think probably we have actually saved the trafficking victims but even after that even after it's not only during the during the destinations or uh, uh, sorry during the transition or during the travel such victims are caught usually after the rescues there are a lot of rescues that happens and after in rescues there are a lot of minors that are found so if you understand immoral trafficking prevention act the idpa act under that there's a designated court under before which these women are produced uh, before the court for their rehabilitative orders in case of minors they are produced before the child welfare committee again for the same purpose of the rehabilitative orders now victims of child marriage any child for whom like the parents have decided ki iski to abhi shaadi karani hai so that child will become a victim of child marriage any child like any girl who is below the age of 18 any boy who is below the age of 21 and they are getting married this is a child marriage and they can you can always report this information to a protection officer or you can directly talk to the child welfare committee you can report it to 1098 which is the child line service and you can say that there is a child marriage that is going to happen and then the police and the protection officer comes and they stop such marriages after marriage also such cases can be reported before the child welfare committee and such marriages are uh, considered as null and void and then there is, there are a lot of rehabilitative measures that can be but they these they will be always termed as victims of child marriage and they are produced before the child welfare committee any child who is without parents the parents are not there are orphan child and they again fall as child in need of care and protection there are lot of mothers uh, there are lot of families who surrender children and who are these families these mothers are usually those who are pregnant because of unwanted reasons because of sexual abuse and they don't want to take care of this child there are even minors who are pregnant because of the sexual abuse that happens to them and that's why they want to surrender the kid and that's why the law allows such surrender to happen the the surrender is before the cwc they file an agreement usually a specialized adoption agency we call them sa- assist such kind of surrenders and they help with an agreement before the child welfare committee uh they say that i would like to surrender that's it and uh, they give they are given two months period to reconsider uh, if you want to take back the child or not if to uh, under two months you do not come back that means the child will be free for adoption and the child is given then for adoption then you find like lot of abandoned children in the dustbins i we have cases where the children have been found in the rickshaws just kept anywhere and gone uh, nowadays you have these uh, specialized adoption agencies keeping a cradle outside their organization so many times this uh, women come and uh, abandon the child in this cradle and then the organization takes care of these abandoned children but there's a process to follow such abandoned children are brought before the child welfare committee the police uh, will try to trace the family of this uh, abandoned child there will be paper publication and after this four months of inquiry period the child will after this be declared as child uh, legally free for adoption i will focus on it on the later part but these children largely i have covered at the children who are in need of care and protection these are the definition given in the law Uh, which term them as child in need of care and protection the understanding of the participant is fairly uh, good but uh, when we talk in terms of 
law of detox in terms of the definition which is laid out in the law and this is what the definition that has been given under law now let me again focus on this that these children who are produced before uh, or uh, we tend to always say that these children are presented they are not produced they are not criminals they are presented before the child welfare committee the committee is also not termed as court and uh, however in practice child welfare committee till date is called court till date people will go to the child welfare committee and will say aaj bachche ka remand hai remand is not the word for the children who are presented before the child welfare committee so we always i i while i was working as a legal support to the child welfare committee i made it a point to say that you have to say that it is a production of the children or presentation of the children not the remand these children are rescued they are not arrested you are not catching them and arresting them there's no handcuffs for these children because they are rescued because they are victims they are victims under so many crimes and that's why they need care and attention and that's why they have been produced before the child welfare committee so yes these are just picture presentation of uh, the child welfare the child in need of care and protection now let's understand what kind of orders does the child welfare committee pass now if you remember our story in the beginning the first thing that a child welfare committee does and should be doing is to pass an order of social investigation should call for a social investigation report in their lingo now they we for to make it short they call it sir now i i call for an sir so an sir is something on which the orders are generally based this is one of the order but the order is based on these uh, reports this is very important because that is to actually go and find out the whereabouts of the child what is the child's economic condition social condition like it is not a police investigation when we say investigation this is very much different from the police investigation you don't have access to their call records or you know things like that whatever other social worker there are social worker who are qualified uh, and they have the expertise in finding out uh, you know uh, in making such reports and observing things which are relevant to the case uh, they are trained for it so it's a job of the social workers to do and they give excellent detailed reports on which the cwc can decide what kind of rehabilitative orders should i give for this child and they also give recommendation under this law this is the first step that every child welfare committee is supposed to do because whenever a case comes before a, a committee it, the committee will not know what what's going on the committee has to know it through the various eyes and these eyes are of the social workers put down in the paper by view of these reports so this this is one of the important the provision uh, of the law and this is under section 36 of the act this is again very important uh, order that the child welfare committee passes uh, this is what is declaring a child legally free for adoption i have given the website's uh, image here the central adoption resource authority which is cara we call them as cara now what's the connection declaring a child legally free for adoption is for those orphan children for surrender and for abandoned children now the child welfare committee will do its inquiry try to find out the children, the parents or guardians or anybody who would like to take care of this children somebody from their family or something and if that is not found and in case of surrender the claim is not been uh, done within the period of 2 months then such children are declared by the child welfare committee as they are legally free for adoption now you can adopt them but you cannot go to a child welfare committee for adoption Ad adoption doesn't happen in child welfare committee child welfare committee will give an order now this is an uh, order issued by an authority this order will go on the cara portal which will declare that child is now free for adoption this is the cara portal this is the official portal for adoptions and here from here all the process of adoption begins adoption process are the lengthiest process ever they will take like one and a half years to two years to three years 
for the entire adoption process to happen because the child is first registered then the parents are registered then the parents and the child are matched there's a there's a uh, home visit there's a foster care for 6 months and then the child is legally given an adoption on all this process child welfare committee really doesn't fall the child welfare official role ends by declaring the child legally free for adoption for foster care or for signing up the adoption papers at times there are some formality signatures to be done that is done by the child welfare committee but technically the de de declaring a child legally free for adoption is one of the tasks of the child welfare committee so usually this has been a practice that from age group of 0 to 6 such kind of orders were considered but now they are talking about children who are even 9 years old 10 years old 12 15 they should also be declared uh, legally free for adoption if they had in the institution for a longer period of time nobody is coming to take care of them i think they also deserve parents and such kind of adoption will definitely give them parents so there are talks about uh, declaring such children also legally free for adoption and because they are older children their consent is also taken and uh, the process is followed so it's a good initiative it's very slow it's been in talks but it's taking its shape somehow in the future so placement of a child in an institution now uh, with the amendment the children's home is not called children's home they are called child care institution we call them cci it's always the cci child care institution and this child care institutions placement orders are usually given by the child welfare committee first and foremost it is a temporary shelter if a child has come probably the child needs an emergency shelter and that kind of shelter is definitely given to such children also there are children who would need more than temporary shelter or uh, the tracing of the parents is becoming difficult so they need more time to be in the shelter home or uh, the child has different needs and then for its rehabilitation for two years three years for study purpose also that child needs to be in a shelter home so the longer period of uh, placement also happens so it is based on the needs of such children who are produced before the child welfare committee that such kind of placement orders are given one is called as the safe custody and one is called as the placement order. That's the, the terms that are used in the Mumbai CWCs that I'm telling you. It differs a little from uh, CWCs to CWCs, but by and large, these are the orders that the CWC passes. Because we are talking about shelter homes, and I think one of the uh, questions that was asked uh, was the types of shelter home also. So quickly, I would like to focus on these aspects as well. The shelter homes that are there, they are there's no specific category as such, but they are divided on the basis of the needs. So we have this uh, specialized adoption agency. They are called SA. Specialized Adoption Agency, SA, which usually gives placement to the children from zero to six years of age. And their main purpose is to actually see if these children can be put into the CARA portal, can be given for adoption, and they facilitate the whole process of adoption. But it's not that they will always strict, strictly restrict to the six years age of children. There are SA that exist in Mumbai, which will house or children below uh, about six years also, considering the shortage of the institution, considering the facilities, considering the needs of the child. And this is always, this order is always given by the Child Welfare Committee. If Child Welfare Committee gives an order to SA to place a child who is above six years of age, then the, that committee or that shelter home does take such children and they place and take care of these children. Second category would be six to 12 years, and then there would be 12 and above till 18 years of age. Then we have aftercare for 18 plus. So six to 12 and 12 to 18 usually are divided because of administrative purposes. That's not a specific need, need kind of a uh, thing. It's more easier for all the administrative staff, the house mothers, the staff, the teachers, for them to re regulate with these children. They can, uh, you know, work on this, this one category of uh, age group better than uh, doing it all together so for administrative purposes from 
six to twelve, it's divided, and then from twelve to eighteen, it's divided. In Mumbai, we have a government shelter home in Chembur, which houses from six to twelve, and then we have there in Sanders Road in Baikala. If anybody has visited the Baikala side, the children's court. JJB. Uh, next to it is the Child Welfare Committee and the different shelter homes. Also, it has an observation home. Also, it has a child care institution. Also, here usually twelve to eighteen years of children are placed. Again, there's a division between boys and girls. They are not kept in the same shelter homes. They are always kept in different homes. And uh, many a times you would also find that there are orphans many times who have been placed uh, in the shelter homes while they were 17 years old and uh, they've completed 18, but they cannot go anywhere. So perhaps they usually placed in aftercare homes. Aftercare are homes are nothing but uh, a shelter home for the persons from age group of 18 to 21. So if a child is 17 years old, say he is 17 and a half years old, that time also the child welfare committee can pass an order to place these children in an aftercare home. So this is a, a, a technical aspect that the child welfare committee has to keep in mind that an order is passed for an aftercare home while the child while the person is a child. If the person is completed 18 years of age, that person becomes adult and then that 18 years old can decide to go anywhere. Now that 18 person himself also can walk through an aftercare home and say, I want to reside. Here, the child welfare committee's order is not valid and it's not required. The that person can himself go to the shelter home. But usually a child welfare committee's order is considered and that's why it's made, it's ensured that an order from the child welfare committee while the child is the child is been passed and an aftercare order is been taken so by and large these are the shelter homes that we have the i have only spoken about the government shelter homes we also have private shelter homes having taking care of same days usually private shelter homes uh, houses children who are orphans and we call them orphanage uh, but there are different child care institutions and again, order from the child welfare committee is only taken. While we find children on the streets or things like that, we cannot directly approach a child care institution and say that place this child to your institution. That doesn't happen. It is always by through the way of CWC. It is always CWC's order that has to be shown in the child care institution to place that child in the child care institution. The institutions cannot say no to an order of child welfare committee. It will be a communication of the child care institution and the CWC considering the vacancies and the capacity of the institution. That can be a matter of their own talks, but that doesn't mean that a child who is for whom an order is being given by the child welfare committee, that institution cannot say no to this child and they have to place this child in the institution. So that's the process and that's how the shelter homes are actually divided. Now, this is one of the most interesting orders I've ever seen in the, the judicial setup, to be honest, because this is a legal support order. Now, uh, cases of POXO comes in. I hope everybody knows what POXO is. It is Protection of Children from Sexual Offense Act. So the sexual abuses that happens against children, uh, those children becomes, they are victims of abuse and they are produced before the Child Welfare Committee for rehabilitation orders, not to decide the case. Again, they are there for the rehabilitation orders. Now, what kind of rehabilitative measures they have one is the counseling. Second is to decide a shelter if the child needs a shelter or not. And third for them, because their cases are so sensitive, the cases uh, involves a lot of proceedings with the courts, police and uh, hospitals running around and things like that. A legal support order is given to various NGOs who can be with the child throughout the process. This NGOs are experts in dealing with POXO cases and uh, uh, by and large only uh, POXO and ITPA get such orders. Uh, I wish if such orders are passed for every child for every case because a hand holding is required for every child in everything. But uh, in practice legal support order is given to POXO victims and uh, this uh, legal support there are a lot of NGOs like we have uh, NGOs like Majlis and we have Pradna 
who do an excellent job on the ground they go with the child uh, they help the child to prepare for the witnesses so that they are not scared of the setup and that's why uh, they could really testify well in the courts for, for their particular cases and uh, you know have give them that support throughout whatever it may be be the police be the courts getting the papers out whatever documents they need and telling them what is required guiding them throughout the process so this is one of the best orders i have ever witnessed from any court so child welfare committee does pass these kind of orders um then we have this bal sangopan yojana which gives financial support to children for their education so single mothers or economically weak again there is a there's a home visit report done that is the sir done and then they find out okay this child is in need of financial support we can give that financial support for the education and then the cwc passes an order that we can give you and there are again various ngos who facilitates all this process uh, during the covid uh, there under the bal sangopan yojana there was uh, the scheme launched for the covid orphans and the, uh there was like a lot of amount being distributed for this children i do not know what is the current situation because i have tried for one of the cases and uh, i came to know that there's an ngo who supports for the financial support of this child and the ngo has now stopped to working or giving that so we have like landed up in hope but while i was in the mumbai cwc i have seen like a queue of people standing uh, for uh, their signatures for balsang of anyojna and they could get financial support because they lost their parents due to covid so that it does exist and uh, balsang of anyojna in which phase exist for economically weaker uh, sections of the societies and uh, single parents and things like that counseling is one of the major orders that the child welfare committee gives because i personally feel that every child who comes to the child welfare committee is has gone through a lot is it's traumatized and it needs that kind of counseling unfortunately the infrastructure and uh, you know we don't have that much manpower so child welfare committee really has to prioritize on the cases and then they based on the case gives counseling orders usually a child who is placed in a shelter home they do have an in house counselors and such kind of counselings are done even there in the child care institution and despite that if the child is not placed in an institution but there are rehabilitative orders say in cases of poxo where the child is being given to the family in such cases counseling orders are also given many a times the child welfare committee may not be having that tools enough or cannot talk to the child because the child is so disturbed that the child may not be speaking to the child welfare committee directly in such cases also in a child welfare committee there is a room for counseling there has to be a room for counseling and the, the child then uh, meets a counselor and that kind of talk or interaction has been facilitated by a counselor so this is one of the major uh, orders passed by the child welfare committee now medical termination of pregnancy as i have already mentioned that even minors uh, get pregnant due to the various uh, sexual abuses that happens to them and uh, if the ch- child wants to abort she can abort and uh, considering the periods which are given in the medical termination of pregnancies at that uh, it is till 30 weeks or not i am not sure but 28 or 30 weeks till that time they can abort and then an order from the uh, in my case i think i have seen an order obtained from the high court for, for this and for obtaining such orders this child may need a legal a strong legal support because these orders or these cases have to be rushed in a lot more than anybody else because the time can just run and can fly so it it, lay, it takes like 3 to 5 days to only file this case and to be bring it on the urgent boards and then get the orders there are many orders that the child welfare committee of mumbai has facilitated through legal aid clinics so thankfully uh, the child welfare committee was uh, in touch with very competent and uh, the lawyers who could really get through these uh, urgent cases and could get an order for abortion of such child but in one of the cases uh, the 
court has the high court honorable high court has not given permission for abortion and a 13 year old girl has given birth to a child luckily this child who has given birth was also safe the child was born safely and then the surrender process was done in this case but uh, yeah you know the kind of facilitation and the speedy process has to be done when it comes to medical termination of pregnancy for such children so this is also one of the orders which child welfare committee does support focusing back on the same thing that this child welfare committee is a support system and uh, it should be child friendly and uh, that's what the act keeps on saying that it has to be child friendly because it has to take care of the child needs it has to be child centric we are not here to accuse the child into uh, accuse is definitely not a term to be used at all the child here a victim and their needs and uh, other stuff have to be taken into care so while i was focusing on the child friendly uh, nature the juvenile justice act section 3 focuses on, on general principles of care and protection and they are by and large that governs the whole act so whenever a decision has to be made for the child uh, the child's participation has to be taken into consideration of course the age of the child will definitely be a determining factor at how much participation of the child we should take or not but i guess one of the experienced social workers have taught me that a child is participative even if the child is like 3 years old because the child uh, show some signs of the child would cry if it doesn't like something the child would uh you know smile or there are other ways of which the child communicates to the experts who deal with such children know better but uh children who are more than uh, 7 years or more than 5 years also who can talk and with whom we can interact and get to know about their understanding do you like or not do you want to go with this auntie or not is also a, a way of getting the participations involved so uh, yes the participation or the consent of the child while taking cases while taking you know decisions for the child is very important usually this comes when there's a custody uh involved wherein the child's custody has been taken and where the child has been you know counseled and said that you have to be here for some time will you be is it okay will you like to be with this didi so that kind of participation is definitely taken into consideration because juvenile justice believes in the principle of participations of the children every child should be de- dealt with dignity and worth a child because the child cannot be treated the way we want them to be uh you know i have i would not name i have seen people dealing with them in a very bad manner and uh, i think they have to understand the juvenile justice act better if you find them you have to remind them that the principle of dignity and worth is there for the children they have to be treated with a lot of respect they are children and they that is their right to be treated with dignity and worth i will cover that in the rights of the children as well and uh, all the proceedings that we that the child welfare committee is doing with the children the orders that are passed for these children these all orders are confidential this is under section 74 of the juvenile justice act not no child uh, if you are if you are uh, dealing with the cncp and you cannot post their pictures randomly on the social media their images you will always find that this uh, whenever such children's faces are seen on social media they are usually covered now they covered with a mask or they blur it out or that the pictures are taken from behind the names are not disclosed anywhere such kind of measures have been taken so that the identity of child is been kept confidential and this confidentiality principle has to be followed very strictly because there is a punishment under section 74 if anybody breaks this law there's a punishment if you break the confidentiality you get a punishment then uh, principle of institutionalism as a last resort uh, so there are a lot of principles actually mentioned in the jj act i have picked up very few so and very major ones because i think this is something that we need to speak uh, we need to talk about and this is one of the most important principles of the jj act that 
a child should not be put into institution institution it is the first attempt of the child welfare committee should always be to bring the child back to the family then to the relatives or then to the adopt if there's an adopted mother to them and then at the last should be institution institution should never be the first a uh, measure for giving rehabilitation to the child that cannot be a measure of rehabilitation even if the child is in the institution the measures are made by the probation officer by the child welfare committee to find out the family and if there's a family the family is not able to take care the family is given time to take some measures so that they can take care of the child they can get the child back and that the child can be with the family juvenile justice act so much believes in the emotional needs of the child that is how the child will actually develop because the child needs to be with the family and from there only the development actually begins in some cases where child is often would be stay telling to take care we don't have any other option but for institution and like i've already mentioned that if these children are given in adoption they get a family is a definitely better way of rehabilitation of this child because that the child gets a nice family and i've seen i have seen myself that there 15 and 16 years old children also have given for adoption because some parents came and they said we want somebody who are 15 and 16 years old and uh, uh, we were like okay these girls are willing to go for adoptions and uh, such kind of adoption has happened so yes it's institution is not a good place even that is what the dj act believes for the child for its overall development for its rehabilitation so i wanted to focus on that coming back to this child friendly provisions why i am saying that the act keeps on saying uh, it has to be child friendly child friendly child friendly it's just not saying it's there very much given in the provisions it is given under the juvenile justice model rules 2016 which is now amended as 2022 but these provisions are very much there and this provision says that no police no advocate no child welfare committee member or any other person to be in their uniforms whenever a person who uh, whenever a police officer who comes to present a case and the person is in uniform that person will be uh, have, will have to face the child welfare committee and you know that that is not allowed and there would be other disciplinary action against them so they are not supposed to be in uniforms there has to be a child friendly premises this picture is actually of Mumbai CWC premises which I have shown, and this is actually by uh, this is the CWCs uh, where I have served, where and it is by the NGO where I was working. It was International Justice Mission who have helped in creating such child friendly premises for the children, and uh, with the paintings, with the books, with the coloring books, with the story books. you know it try to make it this this kind of fence where the, there is a fence this is the child play area and after that is the the cabin for the child welfare committee and there's a counseling room there's a place for the reception for the data entry but then we have a dedicated child play area and in many child welfare committee such kind of places have now been made uh, trying uh, an attempt has been made to make this place child friendly and uh, then this place should definitely not look like court and that's the attempt of whenever you go in a child welfare committee and you say what kind of place is this it doesn't even look like court then excuse me it is because it is given in the provisions that it is not supposed to look like a court because it is made for the children and the children should not get intimidated by looking at the uniforms by looking at this kind of environment where they get Uh, scared or they should feel uh, bad about themselves they already feel bad about themselves because they think they have landed up in a wrong place they have done something wrong and that's what the provisions the atmosphere the environment the uniforms are very much put in the provision so that we make all our attempts to not make the child feel scared at all because the child is already going through a lot the Uh, you would find in the jjb you would find raised platforms where the judges sit but in child welfare committee you will find in the flat they the child should be able to talk to the child welfare committee members directly they should not be in a witness box it should be 
there's a formal setup though but it should not be something which is similar to the court and that's the whole idea of having such kind of colorful premises so this is the child friendly provisions also when we say the dignity and the respect that we have to do for the children that is also one of the child friendly provisions uh, we have to take care in mind that we are not only making the environment for them child friendly while we are dealing with them while we are talking to them it should also be child friendly the child is a victim the child is a child in need of care and protection and not so uh, even child in conflict with law also we have child friendly processes that's a different uh, there are different provisions in the jjb but for child in need of care and protection they are victims they are supposed to be dealt with a lot of uh, child friendliness the rights of children are, it was asked to me the rights of the children and uh, uh, it is very much given under article 24 25 39 e of the constitution of india and by and large these are the rights a child has the right of education the child needs to be protected from his adverse employment like we have already discussed with the child labor provisions child labor uh, makes it a point to punish those culprits who employ such children there are provisions for the children victims who are uh, of the victims of the child labor produced before child welfare committee then there are child to be protected from exploitation any kind of exploitation sexual abuse physical abuse or you know trafficking or any kind of exploitation they should even bonded labor labor is an exploitation so they need to be protected from them and the government take measures to protect them from such kind of exploitation then uh, right to early childhood and uh, we have different programs like anganwadi and things like that for children from age group of 6 0 to 6 years and uh, that's what we are trying to do we try to give proper nutrition we try to give them some schooling lessons and uh, that's why we are trying to preserve their childhood we are like any adult has a child right to equality the child also has the right to equality we cannot discriminate child on the basis of their color we cannot be on the basis of the girls or boys or you know anything we can't discriminate children they are all equal they are all unique in their own ways they have their own ways of learning and uh, taking up things somebody can be slow somebody can be fast but we should not be discriminating them on any kind of basis a child has its right to practice its own religion any kind of religion the child has uh, even in institution we have this individual care plan if the child is an institution and the child wants to pray in its own way the child should be given that that respect has to be given to the child okay you want to do you want to read namaz you want to read namaz you can do that you want to do your puja you can do that or any other prayer, way of worship you want to do you can do that that kind of respect always has to be given to the children uh right to nutrition and health like uh, the, these vaccination uh, camps that we have from the government is because they have their right to health and that's why the government takes care of such vaccination programs and they, because they want to take care of our children so these are the rights of the children by and large and i hope i have covered the juvenile justice act as a whole only considering the cncp we know what are cncp what kind of orders are passed for cncp ma'am uh, my query was does being in rehabilitation affect the child's reputation in society and can the child being in rehabilitation be kept a secret to respect the child's privacy now how do you how do you, how would you keep the child's uh, rehabilitation process as a secret do you have any ways for it i guess like uh, we also get like rehabilitation cards and everything like there is like always some sort of just people know that you have been to rehabilitation or something so like some records or just some rumors etc if there are rumors then the child has the right to file a legal action against such kind of people who have uh, declared such kind of thing because the confidentiality as i've already mentioned under the section 74 has is very strictly followed 
and if that is not followed then you know there's a there are conditions to it and then there has to be apology letters and things like that will happen i am not sure of what you are saying is if the person is in if the child is in rehabilitation how do we keep it as a secret right the only way of keeping it secret is keeping the records confidential every institution every rehabilitation center would keep the records confidential if it is not doing it it is not following the law and it's as simple as that whether violation of child rights would constitute abuse of a child yes absolutely the okay. child becomes child in need of care and protection can we ask about records of children in a care homes through pil or rti that's that's a good question and that's a very tricky question to answer actually because of the confidentiality provisions in the law there is still uh, there's no clear answer to it I, we have tried to do it and there has been talks with the women and uh, child, the wcd the women and child development authorities that should we bring these records under rti or not so there's no clear answer to it as such or as of as of now but if you want to file a appeal say you want to file an appeal against so called orders of the child welfare committee there are provisions for appeal okay so you can file an appeal in the sessions court you can file it in the children's court there is a provision uh, under jj act under section 101 if i'm not wrong okay so under that section you can there are different appeal courts given for different kind of matters and that's why i'm asking to refer 101 for these things you can always apply for a certified copy for the orders of your case okay you cannot directly ask like in rti you can access to any records that kind of provision is not available but if it is coming for you like you want an order copy or something you can uh, you can write an applications to the child welfare committee and the child welfare committee more or less are kind enough to give you a certified copy if they are not giving again you can you know take in writing that they are not giving the order uh, they can write and write uh, to you that we cannot give you for so and so reason and then for that order also you can go in appeal but as such in under rti the records are as of now not available unfortunately is consent of a child considered while adoption what in the cases of mentally unfit children okay so this is a very adoption centric question as i already mentioned the child welfare committee's role ends when the child declare when the child welfare committee declares the child legally free for adoption now consent of the child i don't know if they have been taken because it's a very it's a you have to refer to adoption regulations 2017 and uh, you know it's a whole lot of technicalities involved so it's a tricky question for me as well you can definitely refer uh, adoption regulations 2017 it's very easily available on the internet what is the difference between a parent abandoning a child and surrendering a child a parent abandoning a child would abandon the child anywhere can be like on the streets and just go and will never appear they they don't want to disclose their identity and they would just you know give away the rights on the child and they just don't want to take care of the child usually with the sexual abuse cases usually it happens that they don't want to even disclose that it is my child it happened to me and i don't want to bring in front of anybody for that matter in case of surrender the woman who is who the woman or the family who is taking care of that child will come before the child welfare committee and surrender the child with a proper document saying i don't want this child so that's a major difference between surrender and abandon uh, in the cases of drug abuse of a child uh, is the medical attention also provided in special home yes yes medical attention is uh, very crucial for such children giving drugs or uh, intoxicating substance to the children is one of the crimes and it is very much given under the jj act under section 76 and uh, 76 or 77 and uh, there is a punishment for it and whenever such kind of cases comes be it drugs or not if the child needs medical attention the child welfare committee will see to it that the child gets prima facie medical attention and in child care institution also there are medical uh, facilities available so that kind of provision does exist can parents uh, surrender a child to an ngo and in what circumstances parents can surrender in circumstances where they are society 
under societal pressures that they don't want to keep the child or uh, you can they, they, the cwc will decide that if this this is a good way if this is a uh, circumstances okay enough okay enough to surrender or not uh, the child the family has to come before the child welfare committee stating that these are our circumstances it can be anything that these are our circumstances usually the circumstances will be in the nature of social stigma or you know i don't i cannot take care of the child economic needs i'm not very sure if that will fall under it or not but you know it will again depend from case to case basis and uh, you, the child welfare committee's discretion is important here because child welfare committee can see it from their view that maybe if this family is not able to support this child in that manner if i if the child is surrendered and the child is brought under the adoption uh, portal uh, the kara portal then probably the child will have a better future where the child parents have started giving a thought that i don't want the child what, what kind of rehabilitation what kind of future do we expect of this child so it depends on the child welfare committee's discretion of how much do they consider some child welfare committee may also consider that this is your child your responsibility you have to take care of the child you can't just come in and say that surrender so it's more or less of the discretion and even the orders will differ a little from child welfare committee to child welfare committee you have to you know put across to the committee that i uh, this is this is not the, the the future of the child or the this is not the best interest of the child and probably considering the best interest of the child will always be the first thing in their mind that the child welfare committee will decide and accordingly the surrender will happen so as such there is no where written that only under this circumstances will the surrender be accepted it is more or less economic and uh, economic nine social uh, conditions that forces a family to surrender the child so that is very much possible and uh, maybe you ha- you will have to just make a good application in front of the child welfare committee to surrender the child i yeah. saw a news a few months back i saw a news in the tamil uh, a newspaper uh, from tamil nadu um then there is a school uh, in tamil nadu i don't want to name it uh, that they they have conducted a medical camp so during the um, uh, blood test something like that they found that uh, many children girl children were uh, uh, you know few months pregnant something like that i was really shocked to see the news uh, i do not know what uh, you know what is the education system we have we are totally going away from the cultural pattern and uh, you know it's a responsibility to take, take care of children and follow the children and you know and get along with the children uh, i'm i'm really confused uh, you know because of the modernization or westernization uh, the 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 children are you know going in a wrong side something like that i was really confused i just want to uh, link it with the modernization and westernization uh, because of that you know p um, uh, children are not being taken care of by the parents i'm really confused i just want to get some input uh, from you on that news this is very much seen even in mumbai and anywhere in the country we have this uh, thing called as the teenage affairs okay that's one aspect there's another aspect is the sexual abuse why are the girls getting pregnant have they got into consensual sex with these friends or uh, are these sexually abused now that is something that we have to find out i am a lawyer i would speak only strictly in the sense of you know and the law what the law tries to say under the sex under the poxo any consensual sex is also not considered as that that kind of consent is we cannot be asking from a child a child cannot give consent to sex if the child is 16 years old 17 years old 17 and a half years old but if, uh, and, and that's that's a whole together different topic of teenage affairs that has been termed now that has been brought into the purview of poxo with this medical camp which you are mentioning the medical camp says that the many children many girl children have been pregnant do we know the cause of it? how can we directly go and jump in to directly talking about modernization or westernization yes. i don't know also this medical camp have actually reported so many cases so is it that we never had such kind of incidents before is this the first time that we are having or is it because now we know that they, this is happening because through medical camp on record on paper we could find them out so really is there a westernization or culture 
change i don't know and i i am not an expert on culture i'm not expert on westernization i am an expert on the law i would only speak in the strict sense of the law and the law unfortunately uh, will also not consider consensual sex as consent as sex and it will term it as an abuse and that's why these children are brought before child welfare committees and that there's a different provisions altogether i think to really give you an understanding a fair understanding of this is uh, we need to understand this article correctly and th- that's the first thing that a lawyer would want to know find out what is the real cause has all the girls having affairs that's number 1 have all the uh, is it also not a sign of sexual abuse of these girls in the same school is there one person who is doing sexual abuse to these girls how are so many girls falling pregnant in one school there can be multiple reasons there can be legal reasons but they need not mean cultural reasons to it parents not taking care i don't know parents not taking care or not how does that matter for me as a lawyer it is for me the abuse has happened to these girls who are minor and uh, the culprit has to be punished and uh, that's that's it for culture and other things maybe you will have to talk to another expert for that